now present For the Record. Welcome back to For the Record. We have a lot to bring you today as it seems every week 2020 gets a little more complicated. Today we're talking about election fraud and what protections are in place to make sure that every vote counts and it only counts once. Before we get to that, we want to look at a few issues playing into the race for the White House, such as the current fight over the Supreme Court. It's bringing back memories from 2016, another election year with another Supreme Court vacancy. Both times, one side has said you should not fill the seat. But according to Madison College's political expert Maurice Shepard, this one is a debate as old as the country itself. The issue in terms of um, filling a Supreme Court vacancy one year prior to a presidential election. That is something that for a very long time has been an issue uh, in terms of national government. It goes back to George Washington, um, Abraham Lincoln, uh, FDR and that sort. So this is nothing new. That's been a discussion always that um, once you get into that sort of one year window, 12 month window, it, it should not happen. Again, um, uh, what's occurring now is uh, compared to uh, uh, 2016 um, is different. The Republicans have, I guess, they, they, they could make the argument that in 2016 they made a principle, uh, they took a principled position and a principled argument. Uh, this year it's pure politics. They know that they have the opportunity now to um, shift the U.S. Supreme Court to have a majority um, conservative uh, view on it. It will be they end up being six to three um, for a, a fairly long time. So there's nothing unconstitutional about it. Um, there's nothing, again, they aren't breaking any rules or laws, um, but it is. it goes against tradition. Let's put it that way. There are multiple instances in American history when presidents in the Senate did fill a vacant seat in an election year. Though according to this longtime blog on the Supreme Court, the latest an administration has done so is July. An appointment of a conservative justice now would be the closest to an election that Shepard can remember, and it would give the court a solid conservative majority. You will view it based on where you sit. So I don't think, and, and nor do I think that there's a great deal of I'm surprised in terms of this. This is, and again, I, I think this is sort of new and uncharted territory to have um, this seat filled at such a close date to a presidential election. And then typically when we do see these, has it just been, we've been in an era where there's more bipartisanship or it hasn't been a divided government or how does this, how else does this differ? Is it just a time that we're alive? It's just really divided? There's nothing necessarily new here, um, even though in theory in American politics, we like to think of the court, in particular the federal court system as sitting outside of politics. The reality is, is that it exists in a larger political system. So there's, so at the heart of it, there's nothing new. Human nature has not changed over time. Um, and the political parties and their interests will do in many cases, what is in their advantage. What probably is new at this point in time is the, and this goes along with maybe technology, but just the sheer, um, the intensity of the divide between the two dominant parties and their political uh, and the ideologies that they're based on. Um, it's probably, it's, again, that's always existed. It may be just much deeper right now than it's ever been before. I know it's difficult to say, but how do you think that we'll reflect on this since it has happened before, but just not this close, and we do have all this division? Well, um, I would have to say we have to wait and see. Um, if, again, according to Mitch McConnell, the um, majority leader in the Senate, and um, Lindsey Graham, who's chair of the uh, Judiciary of the Judicial Committee, um, they have already laid out a very aggressive time frame to have hearings, uh, to introduce the to introduce the nominee, to have hearings, to invoke cloture, move it out of committee, and send it to the Senate for for once again uh, the, the full vote. Um, to have that done before election day, if that happens, um, then we will have to wait and see. One, one, what are the results of the upcoming uh, election? Again, not just sort of president, once again, not, not just in terms of the presidency, but also um, the U.S. Senate. You know, if the Republicans can hold on to control of the Senate, um, you know, again, uh, they will just move forward. 
if the Democratic Party is able to win the presidency and the Senate, um, there may be more unusual times ahead because, again, the Judiciary Act of, of the Constitution and the Judiciary Act together um, give Congress the ability to restructure the courts how they see. So they can add seats, they can, you know, reduce the number of seats. You know, it goes back to F was FDR and the court packing sort of incident and that sort of thing. They may see a five, they may see, a, excuse me, a six to three conservative court unacceptable. It may move to increase the size of the U.S. Supreme Court, basically, um, again, getting, getting rid of that, once again, dominant conservative uh, position on the court. The Supreme Court is set to hear a lawsuit about the Affordable Care Act just after the election, but Shepard cautions against assuming how a justice will rule before she does. Coming up on the other side of this break, we'll tackle a concern some have had this year with mail-in ballots, what the Madison City Clerk is doing to prevent election fraud.